if you're trying to do something for you, do it for you. And also be very protective of that goal and of that ambition. Because you have that want and that desire for something more for a reason. It is so easy to stay in our comfort zones to ignore it or to push it back. Or I'll do it when the kids get older. Or I'll do it when everything seems right. But no, you have to do it now because you have that desire for a reason and you have to act on it now because tomorrow is not promised. Welcome to the Worthy Mother Podcast, where we discuss all things identity, self-compassion, and fulfillment within and beyond motherhood. I'm Emily Rose Hardy, a mindset and self-love coach for moms. I am a firm believer that to be able to take care of our children, we must take care of ourselves first. This is not a parenting podcast. No, this is a podcast where we will challenge the societal expectations of what it means to be a mom, demystify the perfect mom myth, and learn to love ourselves. You are worthy, mama. Let's do this. Welcome back to the Worthy Mother podcast. We are going to jump right in today. I have a lovely guest joining us today, and we are going to be chatting about our mindset as ambitious mothers and how showing up for our kids means showing up for ourselves. Joining us today is Annalise Garcia. She is a mom of two and a mindset mentor for mompreneurs. In 2022, she started her podcast, The Mommy Mindset Podcast, where she talks about her journey through motherhood and entrepreneurship giving insight and encouragement to other moms striving to be the best they can. Through her journey of learning more about mindset and personal development, she instantly found a passion for connecting with other women and helping them develop a stronger mindset to connect with their highest self. So Annalise, welcome to the podcast. I'm so excited. We have really similar entries into motherhood support, like how we got into this work. So I'm just so excited to have you here for this conversation And I'd love for you just to introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about you and what you do. Well, thank you so much, Emily. I'm so excited that I found you, that we connected because you're right. Our podcasts are alike and just our, you know, communities and kind of our message that we want to share with other women, other moms is similar. So I love when I get to connect other podcast hosts that are moms and, you know, in the same field as me. So thank you so much for having me on. Like you said, I am a mom of two that are a big gap. I have a 10-year-old and I have a 15-month-old, so I have a huge gap between them. And I think that's just fun because overall, under the umbrella of motherhood, there's so many different paths that we take. People have like three under four and things like that, but I have two different worlds, a boy and a girl, and it's so much fun. By day, I'm a career coach, so I help people you know, start and get their careers up off the ground running. And then I also have my Mommy Mindset community, which I love helping and connecting with ambitious moms, moms in business, moms wanting to start a business, because I started my entrepreneurship journey back in 2019, when actually my boyfriend got deployed and I had to move back into my mom and it was just like a whole mess. And I felt like it was my rock. But I always believe that things happen for us and not to us. And everything happens for a reason. So it was a good point in my life where I'm like, okay, you know, things suck right now. But what do I want to do with my life? And that was starting a business. So I started my product-based business. I would sell lashes to women, to busy moms that just want to pop on a pair of lashes really quick and out the door. So I had that business for about a year and a half. And then I started my first ever podcast with my sister we were called two peas in a pod and then it was just a fun little project but i was like whoa like i actually started a podcast got it running and like put it out there and i really like doing this so that's when i decided to relaunch my podcast the mommy mindset podcast when i was eight months pregnant with my second i didn't want to wait i was like you know i am all full of energy. I don't know how at eight months pregnant, but I was like, you know, I want to do this. I want to get back out there, help other moms with my journey of like, I was starting over again with another baby. And it was just crazy because my boyfriend came back from deployment 
we were in the process of buying a house. So it was just like a whole big shift and change in my life. And I was like, I want to share this with other moms and other women. So that's why I started the Mommy Mindset Podcast. And I'm growing into a community to connect and empower and help women build their mindset to achieve their dreams. Because I do believe that motherhood is really important. But I think finding ourselves as a woman, apart from wife and mother duties that it's important to know who we are and what we want. I love that. Your story is such a like reflection of what can happen when we are going through those massive shifts that can feel really uncomfortable and quite frankly like horrible at times, right? When it's like you say you were at your rock bottom and it got you started on a journey that eventually led you to being able to support other moms in a similar journey, right? To be able to do something more for themselves. And this idea of showing up for ourselves and putting ourselves first in a way and, you know, following our dreams because we're worthy of following our dreams. Not because, you know, anything to do with our kids, but in doing that, it does actually show our kids like what we're capable of and what they're capable of. So I think it's a really powerful story I would love to know a little bit more about what brought you to the work of like supporting ambitious moms. I know, like, how did I go from selling lashes to, you know, this big podcast community? But I think it all started high school because I was a young mom. I was a teen mom in high school. And I mean, even before my son, I was really ambitious. And of course, as a teen mom, I got put into the statistics and like, oh, you're not going to go to college. You're not going to do that. So I think most of it was just coming from my own struggles and challenges of what I had to overcome. But, you know, I did have it easier than others where I had my village and support at home and going through college and things like that. So I feel like that's where it came from, where I was so lucky to have a support in the village behind me to, you know, finish high school in honors. And like I was in all the clubs. Like, just show them that just because I had a kid in high school didn't mean it was like it changed what I wanted to do with my life or that I wanted to, you know, still go to college. So I wanted to show other young moms at the time that you can do it because I did have other friends that did get pregnant in high school kind of the same time as me and like went down different paths and that's totally fine. And I wanted to stay close with them to show them and say, okay, I know things look different for you, but like, Let's get back on it. Like, what do you want to do with your life? And I was kind of like, in a way, mentoring my own people around me that were kind of in a similar situation with me. But I wanted to show them that, you know, if I can do it, so can you. So that's where it kind of stemmed from. And then like going through college and going through uh, next phases in my life, I was like, you know, I just really love connecting with other women in general. And that's where I started going to networking events and things like that. And I was like, I just love the community. And I'm like, I want to build one and share my own insights and my own piece of advice and throw in my two cents, you know, and to help other women. Oh, I love it. I love like how you say you have the support to be able to do certain things that may not be possible or, you know, something that feels achievable for someone else who maybe in a similar situation if they don't have that support behind them. But then you, as someone who was able to have that support and move forward as a teen mom, and also someone who was able to follow their own ambitions, and then be that support for others. And whether that's for other young moms or other moms in general who are, you know, looking for support in their own journey to say, hey, I've got this, I can do this. It's really a cool story and just like a testament to like what we're capable of when we come together and support one another. Yeah. And I'm not saying like, oh, I had such a hard time. It was like everyone goes to their challenges, but I know other people that did have it a little bit harder than me. But I think that's when your true character and your determination kind of comes in full force when mm -hmm. your back is against the wall and you have no other choice. And it's like you can stay beaten down or you can turn it around and be like, okay, this is an opportunity for me. And it, it's so much easier said than done because when you're in it, you're like, this is terrible. My life is over. 
what am I doing? You know, you get all those negative thoughts and that's normal. And I see it with other people's stories too. It's like when your back is against the wall, you do have a choice. We always have a choice. And especially as mom, we do have to think of our kids in those choices. And I think using our challenges and our struggles to build ourselves up is the best thing that you can do for yourself and your kids. I love it. You talk a lot about mindset. Obviously, your podcast is the Mommy Mindset Podcast. And I find that your approach to mindset is quite accessible to moms who might have a lot going on, right? What does it mean to you to have a strong mindset in motherhood? It means that you're not going to be 100 every day, every second of the day. And you're going to have your trials and tribulations and you're going to have your bad days. And like, you're going to have your struggles as a woman if you have, you know, issues arguments with your husband at times like you're going to be going through stuff but the strong mindset is okay I'm not going to stay in this place I'm not going to stay in this place of despair I'm not going to stay in this place where I'm feeling sorry for myself but not so much that we have to be the the strong woman all the time and show no emotion it's to okay I'm just gonna do the best that I can and strive to be better because we can be so hard on ourselves as moms to do everything right for our kids or to you know be the best wife to make sure the house is okay you know we have kind of our expectations in a way but the strong mindset comes in is where it's just understanding yourself being aware and being intentional of the person you want to be for one the mom the wife and everything else. So I think just being more intentional with who you want to be and knowing that, okay, this is my circumstances at the time. This is my past, but I'm always striving for better. Yeah. There's something in there about, you know, a strong mindset doesn't equal like a tough front. It's not about like showing up as some indestructible human who can face anything flawlessly, but it really is that self-compassion and that ability to like get back up when things are hard and to know like if you're having a hard time getting back up that like that's okay too right the full acceptance and awareness is such an important piece about it and it's so important that we talk about that right it's important that we talk about how we can show up in motherhood in a way that isn't always perfect I mean it's never going to be perfect but that we can also consistently be pouring into ourselves to better ourselves and that doesn't have to be just for everyone else yeah and i think it's also important that because i know there's perfectionism and there's compare Mm -hmm. you compare yourself and i know for the longest too i was so hard on myself that i felt like i wasn't doing anything right but it's having compassion for yourself because as moms like I don't know about like as you as a person, but like as a person, I'm just so compassionate towards others and it's obviously especially my mom. So it's just like, oh, how are you feeling today? Are you okay? Are you okay? And so and we're so used to taking care of everyone else. And it's like, okay, we need to stop and be like, how am I taking care of myself? And I actually got called out. My mom will be the first one to call me out, right? I mean, that's just what moms do. We call, <laughs> you know, our loved ones out. She's like, you have this platform of telling moms to take care of themselves and you don't take care of yourself. And I was like, what? I'm like, don't you tell me that. I'm like, I do. But no, (laughs) when I'm so busy and so when I'm like stressed out, I don't eat. And that's just so normal for me because I'm like, oh, I'm so busy. I'm so busy. I'll do it later. I'll do it later. But it's simple things like, am I drinking my water? Am I eating enough protein? Like, it's the simple things where I was like, had to put myself in check. And I was like, okay, I preach about this or I say I want to do it, but am I really doing it? Yeah, it's like one of those things. Even if you are so intentional about it in terms of like, this is what you speak on. This is like a platform you have, but it's still like living it. The realities is that as a mom and as somebody who has a lot going on in motherhood and in all of the other things you're doing, it still is something that we have to like be so, so intentional about and constantly thinking about to make it happen. And I think that's such a 
a good example of that, that this isn't, again, it's not the goal of like perfectly showing up for yourself because there is a lot going on, but it's just constantly having this conversation, keeping it front of mind so that you can check in and be like, okay, how am I doing on taking care of myself? Okay, there's some areas that I'm really having a hard time in. And even though I used to be really good at it, life has changed. And, you know, I need to kind of head back to the drawing board and figure out like, how do I make sure to eat three meals a day or whatever it is, right? Mm -hmm. I really love how you highlight that in order to show up for our kids, we do have to show up for ourselves. And you spoke a little bit about that, like what it looks like to care about ourselves. But what does that mean in your eyes to show up for yourselves when you're working with moms? What are you helping them to do in that way? To first put themselves back on the priority list. Yeah. Sometimes you're just completely off of it or you're the last one on there. And I mean, that's okay because I've heard the other side. It's like, well, that's our job as moms. And like, I shouldn't feel bad for caring for family. It's like, no, don't feel bad about it. Because there's times where I'm the one that eats last and I'm the one that showers last because I got to take care of everyone else. And that's okay, but I'm going to make sure that when I do have my time, I'm being intentional with it. And when I do have the pockets of time throughout my day, I'm not just wasting it. I'm actually going to be mm-hmm. intentional and using it as and instead of just scrolling mindlessly on Instagram, I'm going to be reading my book that I've been always wanting to read or journaling or just going outside and taking a walk. We're also showing up for yourself that I've seen for myself and other moms is keeping promises to yourself. And they can be small promises. Like if you tell yourself, okay, I'm going to wake up in the morning and then I'm going to go for a walk. Keep that promise to yourself and wake up and go for a walk. And I think that's where I've learned where if I'm going to be setting a goal or if I want something and tell myself, okay, I'm going to do this, that I keep that promise to myself. Because when I do, it's like, okay, I trust myself a little bit more. And, you know, obviously I'm showing up for myself that I'm like, okay, I love myself enough that I showed up because I always put it like this too. I used to have a trainer when I worked down at the gym. And obviously because I had that appointment with her, I was showing up, you know, in a way I'm showing up for myself because I'm going to work out, but I was like showing up for her because she was my accountability partner and she was my coach. So like I had to show up or I would get in trouble or whenever. And I was like, we need to do that with ourselves. We need to set an appointment or a date, you know, like have a date with ourselves to show up, but keep that promise to ourselves because we'll keep our promise to everybody else, you know, to our kids, to our jobs, to our boss. But we won't keep that promise to ourselves just to do like a simple task of maybe sitting down and chilling out for a second. Like, and I feel when you show up for yourself like that, you start trusting yourself and you start finding more confidence in yourself too. And there's so much in there that I want to get into. The first thing is something that I find comes up a lot and I have conversations with individuals about this. But I don't know that I've ever addressed it fully on the podcast. But this idea of priorities and putting yourself at the top of the priority list and how that doesn't necessarily mean not also making showing up for your kids the most important thing. Obviously, taking care of our kids, making sure they're fed, making sure they're healthy and supported is going to be like a number one. And when it comes to like survival mode and you know, those needs that we have to like keep them safe. Yes, like they are the priority and we're going to do anything for them. But that doesn't mean that like how you show up for yourself when you're not in survival mode as a family, right? It's not just about surviving and having enough and whatever. That you can choose to put yourself first in some of those ways, right? Instead of, you know, allowing your kid to play five different sports where you have to drive them to practice every day and you don't get time for yourself committing to yourself and saying you know what Thursday afternoons are actually my day to do this so if we can't make it work I'm choosing me in this situation right and how priorities are always so black and white of like it's this list of like oh I'm first which means I'm taking care of first before my kids that's obviously not what we're talking about and so I just I love that you brought that up and I think it is such a sticky point for a lot of moms of like I can't be above my kids and it's like putting yourself first and taking care of yourself and choosing to take care of yourself 
for the benefit of everyone does not mean like letting your kids go without food for three days like that. It's not the same thing. And really talking about that and normalizing that is so important and so powerful and impactful. And I think it, it gives moms the permission to feel like, oh, we're not talking about just abandoning everything that makes me a good mom. We're actually just talking about pouring into ourselves. The other piece of what you said there that I'm like, yes, is the learning to trust ourselves through the process of showing up for ourselves and saying, you know what, I'm committing to doing this and I'm going to do it. And the power that that has developing that self-trust is huge. So I just I love that you brought that up. I think it's so important, again, that we just normalize these conversations of like why it's so important to show up for yourself. Like it's huge. So just oh, love the work you're doing <laughs> with all of that. And again, you speak to this with kind of a fresh perspective that I think is really just so approachable. Thank you. And I'm saying this from my past experiences. And, you know, I love to speak and help others with mindset. Mm-hmm. But it's like, it doesn't mean that I'm an expert. Mindset is a daily thing. But with everything that we're talking about, too, like putting ourselves first and how that's going to look like for you and your family, it's going to look so different for every mom because it's going to also look so different for you in different seasons. Like, I went from having a, what, he was nine years old at the time, eight or nine, just having one kid, boy, like, we're having so much fun. At being pregnant and then having a girl, like, you got through different seasons, not just like having kids as, you know, seasons of change. There's so many other things that can go when you go through changing jobs or going from being a stable mom to going to work or vice versa. So the different seasons that you go through also determines how your priorities are going to look. And what's going to be time for, you know, honestly, going back to the kids in sports, the springtime, Dominic was in sports and I loved it. Like we loved it. We loved going to the games. The routine was still really good. And honestly, when fall rolled around and it was time to sign back up, we didn't put him in sports. It just was not the right time. And honestly, as a parent, I felt bad because I was like, I know he liked it. It's like, I'm taking this, like, away from him. You know, I had a hard time as a parent to choose not to put him in sports this time around. But it's like, it's okay. It is okay. I'm not going to beat myself up about it. He's okay. We can still do different things. He's still an active kid. I'm not depriving him of anything. But, you know, that's a real scenario that I'm like, okay, I really did feel like a bad mom. And then it wasn't just like about choosing me first, but it's like, well, now instead of running him to sports, I do have more time with him at home and for us to do things together here or for us to go somewhere. And just like that, it's you're making certain choices for yourself and for the season that you're in right now with your family and what works for you. And I've heard this a long time ago too. It's also kind of like the expectation to have dinner on the table every night. And I was listening to this other woman speak. She's a really big educator and she helps schools with their curriculum and things like that. So they're like really busy. So them sitting down at the dinner table at five o'clock every night is like not doable for them. And that's how it works in their family. She's like, I stopped putting so much pressure on myself to have dinner ready on the table by 6 p.m. And that just was not doable for me and my family. We have breakfast together. We just, I'm like, I don't care. I'll buy them McDonald's for dinner. But that's how it works in our family. No, and that's so true because the different seasons that you're in, just life is going to look different for you. But that's just temporary. And you shouldn't beat yourself up as a mom that, oh, it's looking different than, you know, this mom. Or, you know, where we had to stop doing this one thing for our kids. But just giving yourself grace and knowing that everything is temporary and it plays itself out. Yeah, there's so many choices we have to make like daily and then also just these kind of bigger choices of, you know, how we show up for our kids, what we allow them to do, all these things, like the day-to-day and the big things. And when we put so much pressure and expectations on each of those choices, it's like there's no way we can do it all. There's no way we can do it all to everyone else's expectations and we have to kind of start to 
lift some of those pressures because there's no way to do it all. There's no way to cram it all in and also fill your cup and also show up for your kids all the time. Like we can't take on these external expectations constantly. And again, it's one of those things that having the conversations, bringing the awareness that we're even doing that because it just happens automatically. Like, oh, the expectation is dinner has to be on the table at five because maybe that's how it was in my family growing up. And maybe, you know, that's what I see other people doing or I perceive that other people are doing. It's like, okay, wait, 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 let's think about this. Does that work for me? And is the pressure of that expectation actually something that I care about, that I care to live up to? And oftentimes the answer is no, but there's so many decisions that we have to really like be aware of why we're thinking we have to choose something over something else. Mm -hmm. And that's what I love how you said, like the pressure of outside expectations. And I think that's such a huge thing that we let dictate our how we parent sometimes and how we run our households and how we feel about ourselves as moms sometimes. And it's like you said, it doesn't have to be like that because it does not have to be so hard and feel like you are always under pressure to seem a certain way or to have things a certain way or see how many sports your kids can be in. And it, I'm not saying like, oh, I'm never going to put Dominic back in sports, but it's just what is going to be working for you right now in this season and being okay with that and knowing that whatever it looks like for you, that some things are going to be sacrificed. I keep throwing the word balance out there and you hear it all the time, everywhere, balance, balance. And that's why I don't think it's so much of balance. I think it's more harmony, if you will. Things just flowing together instead of, oh, everything's just like, cool. Because something is always being sacrificed. And something is always being sacrificed. And most of the time, ourselves is what's being sacrificed. And you need to try to find the harmony of things to be like, okay, I'm not sacrificing myself all the time. Sometimes it's going to be sacrificing time with my husband, you know, just for, you know, that one weekend or, you know, sacrificing time with my kids just for that one weekend doesn't mean all the time because all the time, most of the time, we are sacrificing ourselves of our mental health, of our self care, of putting ourselves first, of doing the things that we want to do. But that's not, that's not a good balance. So finding the harmony of how it's going to work for you, of doing things, of the cleaning and the self-care and doing all the things with the kids, it's all going to flow together when you find that flow that works for you. I love that the way you put that of, you know, there's a lot of sacrificing we have to do just like because there's a lot of things like <laughs> there's a lot of things that we could do. And so we can't fit it all in. I mean, just to, like if we look at time, we can't fit it all in, right? Let alone energy, what we're able to bring to things. But I think that is so true that it's like we do tend to sacrifice ourselves. That feels the easiest. It feels like what we're supposed to do. And knowing that, okay, yeah, maybe something has to give here, but does it always have to be you? Maybe, like you said earlier, maybe there's a day where you're like, oh, I haven't showered in a few days because I've been like, running around trying to get people where they need to go and things have been really rough. It's like, okay, yes, there's going to be times maybe where your care falls off the back burner. That's obviously just one little example. But knowing that like, we don't have to get in the pattern of that being how it is just because it's, I mean, honestly, I think a lot of times the comfortable thing, I really do think it feels more comfortable for a lot of moms. You know, I, I, this comes up a lot on this podcast, but the truth of the matter is that a lot of women in general are people pleasers. And like, that's how we've kind of been trained <laughs> growing up is like, just make other people happy and life is easier. Mm -hmm. And so that's our comfort zone. Being able to like care for other people. Obviously, that's an overgeneralization and men can be people pleasers too. But like really understanding that showing up for others sometimes just comes easier. And so so putting that reflection back on ourselves of like, how can I show up for me can be harder to do, but like extremely important and have massive payoffs in terms of like how you're able to show up for yourself, but also how you're able to show up for everyone else too, which is, you know, if that's 
part of the goal, then cool, focus on it. <laughs> and I was just going to say that too. Like, it, I love how you put it. It's so much easier to let ourselves fall off instead of disappointing or saying no to someone else. But I'm so big on, I mean, I've realized too, like you said, women in general sometimes are more people pleasers. And it's just, you don't want to say no, or you don't want something to come off the wrong way. But I've learned too, setting boundaries. I am so big on that and saying no. And that is really hard, especially when it comes to family. It can be messy and it can look really bad. It can sound really bad and and everything too. It's not what you say, it's how you say it, for one. And you can say no in a stern but, you know, kind voice where it's like, well, no, it's time for me and hubby to finally go on a date or no, it's time for me right now. So I think having set boundaries and learning how to say no to things that are probably putting pressure on us or things that are just like not needing our time right now. And that could be that could be anything. And that also could be setting really healthy boundaries with social media. That could be one that could probably we can cut off because I really like to unplug. It's really healthy for us and our minds and just trying to be more intentional like in real time with the people around us. So I've learned setting healthy boundaries is really, really a good place to start to kind of shed off that people pleaser mentality. Yeah, all about boundaries. We have an episode on setting and holding boundaries on the podcast. So if that's something that you are working on, go check that out. I think it's probably like 10 or 15 episodes back from this one. So something I want to get into, because, you know, we're talking about different stages and seasons of motherhood and how that's one factor that can kind of change how things look. And when we're looking at being an ambitious mom, right, and having goals that we're going after, when there are different seasons and different things going on in our roles as mothers, it can be hard to, like, maintain any amount of consistency with that. I think your example of going from having an eight-year-old to then having an infant is a great example of that. Like things probably changed drastically because all of a sudden you're taking care of a newborn and you have like substantially less time for anything, right? Mm -hmm. What advice do you have for moms who are maybe striving for something beyond motherhood, right? They're putting their efforts towards goals, but who maybe feel like they're not always able to go after their goals the way that they'd hoped because, you know, they have kids and they have things changing and all of that. Oh, my gosh. I literally had this conversation with someone else like last week. And I was like, this is so important because I am felt this. Um, You know, I am an entrepreneur and I've been starting a business. But then I think like sometimes being a mom, it I'm going to be at a slower pace than someone who is not a mom starting a business. But that's okay. Like, it's so hard for me to, it's so hard in general not to compare ourselves. And then when you're trying to compare yourself to someone who is not a mom and trying to go back to school or pursue a career or start a business or whatever, it's like, come on now, you cannot do that. And I told myself that I'm like, you need to stop it because it's like comparing oranges to apples. First of all, stop comparing yourself in general but it's when you're wanting to do something it's start a business or to go back to school or you know get back into your career if you're trying to do something for you you know do it for you and also be very protective of that goal and of that ambition because you have that want and that desire for something more for a reason And I've told myself that for so long to not ignore it because it is so easy and to stay in our comfort zones to ignore it or to push it back or I'll do it when the kids get older or, you know, I'll do it when everything seems right or I'll do it when. But no, you have to do it now because you have that desire for a reason and you have to act on it now because tomorrow is not promised. And I think it's also really important too to be protective of the goal and the vision that you have and to, like I said earlier, the pockets of time that you do have throughout the day, throughout the week, 
it probably won't be a whole six hours you get to dedicate to your business or to the podcast, but you can dedicate probably an hour here or an hour there. I follow Amy Porterfield. She's a master at the digital world. I absolutely love her. And so she calls this like focus time her tiger time. And it's really just the concept of what I've been doing forever too is time blocking. And this is so huge. Like if you're a mom and you're not time blocking, which goes into time management, like start practicing it now. And it's just blocking off an hour of time to dedicate to what you're trying to do, to starting the podcast, starting the business. So it's dedicating the special time to that, which is probably going to be only an hour a week, but that's okay, or two hours a week, but that's okay. So just giving yourself grace that don't compare yourself to other moms or especially to other people doing what you want to do and then don't have kids. Oh my gosh, they're so lucky that they don't have all these responsibilities and priorities and they get to just, you know, launch off into what they want to do. But that doesn't mean that you can't. So give yourself grace, but then it comes down into the actual tangible, actionable thing that you do is just having time management and time blocking that time or the thing that you want to do. Yeah, I love that. It's like the holding the commitment and the self-compassion all together. It's like you can be so, so, so committed to the goals. And I love that you use the word protecting your goals because I think that is such a, like the visual of that is really powerful. It's like, these are really important. It's so crucial that if you have something you want to go after that you allow yourself to do that. But also knowing that like, obviously it's going to look different than someone who doesn't have kids like your kids take a lot of time that's the whole like deal with it right it's like that's a given and so when we compare ourselves to people who are in completely different boats than us it's like well yeah we didn't think that we were going to be able to put as much time into something as they do like that's not <laughs> it's yeah. not realistic I that you're trying and striving to do it mm-hmm. in with kids because i get that a lot too from people who are not parents they're like, oh my gosh, and you're a mom and you're doing X, Y, and Z. Or like, oh my gosh, and you have to take care of your kids and you're doing X, Y, and Z. And I'm just like, well, yeah. Because I'm over here like, oh, you get to do X, Y, and Z and take vacations then have massages every other week. But it's like, you know, we have our perception of people, but you should give yourself a huge pat on the back that you're going after your ambition and a mom because there's so many people that look at us and be like wow look at her she's doing you know all this and she's a mom so yeah don't compare yourself but give yourself props that you are going after your ambition as a mom like don't look at it as a disadvantage it's an advantage yeah Okay, I would love to get into the benefits for our kids. Like when we're showing up for ourselves and we are pouring into our ambitions, we're protecting our goals. What is the benefit to our kids? Obviously, like we're talking about this from the angle of it's important for us as individuals, but I know there are rich benefits to our children when we're able to show up for ourselves and pour into our dreams and all of that good stuff. What do you see kind of as those benefits, that piece of it? I love this question. This is such a good question because I actually recently this year came across there was specific benefits for my kid. Like, why am I doing what I want to do? It's like, yes, to live the life that I want. But like, how is it going to affect my kids? And it's number one, my deep desire, because when I really dug deep into the why, my why of what I want to do. It's for Dominic and Olivia to look up to their mom and be like, wow, my mom did X, Y, and Z. But at the same time, she was there for us. Or she was able to, you know, pursue her dreams. So that means I can do anything, whatever I want to do. And like already I see it in in my 10-year-old. He wants to be an actor and he's just so theatrical. It's like, obviously, as kids, they are just so innocent, have so much ambition, and I want him to keep that. But then I don't want to be a hypocrite and tell him, yeah, go after your dreams and you can do it. But I don't believe that for myself. Like that, 
that's not right. We obviously want and desire that so much for our kids. Obviously, as their parents, we want them to do better than us. But we should also want that for ourselves. We should also want and set the goals and have expectations for ourselves to to reach them so we can show our kids that, you know, I'm right there along with the kid. Like, I have the goals and this is mom trying to achieve hers. Especially if you have daughters, because obviously it's just two different worlds. And so I'm learning this now as a girl mom. I'm like, wow, like, and she just, she looks exactly like me too. So it's just crazy how I'm like, here I have my daughter. Like, how do I want her to grow up? How do I want her to grow up as a young lady? And how do I want her to carry herself? And to respect herself and to have the goals and to have the ambitions. But again, as a mom, I want to be that example to her to show that, you know, I love myself so she can grow up to learn how to love herself. And I have self-compassion and I have my goals and to, you know, still break through the challenges and the roadblocks. And so I want her to have the same as well. Not that we want to live through our kids or not that we want them to be exactly like us just to be that role model for them and to show them that it is possible i like i think i could just ugly cry right now you know i was like oh my gosh i want to cry right <laughs> i have like have the tears yeah, it really it. is it's like the protecting your ambitions and protecting your dreams and thinking about how like in doing that and showing your kids that you can reach adulthood and continue to go after those things it's like you are protecting their ambitions and their dreams like it's wild to think about how we have the ability to do that and when we feel like oh this is selfish or I'm a mom now so like this doesn't matter anymore and it's like well let's think about that when your daughter becomes a mom do you want her to just throw away all the ambitions she's ever had since the time she was 15 months old right like She's this precious little baby now and she'll grow up and do something, whatever it is. And we want that for them. We want them to be able to step into the world and like live their life to the fullest, whatever that looks like for them. And if we're not modeling that, then when they hit adulthood, they're going to face those same things of like, oh, wait, I'm a grown up now. I'm not supposed to do this. I'm going to stifle this because we know that they're going to get those messages along the way. Mm. we got those messages along the way like it's going to happen but also like as the mother as this parental figure as the person that they are seeing day in and day out showing up we have the ability to like wildly counteract anything that's stifling their dreams and ambitions because if they're seeing us day after day show up for ourselves show up for our goals then that's what they're going to do that's the model that they're going to follow Oh, it's like it's just incredible to think about and like it's as big of a deal as it sounds like yes it's such a big thing where uh, not the normal answer but i guess like the common answer is mm-hmm. oh well i just have to work really hard and provide and provide and provide for my kids so they can go and achieve their dreams mm-hmm. and it's like yes that's a given we're going to have to do what parents do and the sacrifices and working hard but also you can do that same at the same time of building yourself up too because you can do the sacrifices of working in a job that you hate for the next 20 years to come just so you can get your kid through college and to see them succeed or you can have the sacrifices while building yourself up and doing what you want to do and following your dreams at the same time still saving and putting your kid through college or watching them grow because it's again with the choices and I also this is probably like really really deep but I did this exercise and I was in a um, mindset master class they had us do this exercise of writing our own eulogy and I was like that was so hard and that's where I did the really deep ugly work of okay how do I want to be remembered not just by the world more specifically how do I want to be remembered by my kids 
Like when I am gone, what am I leaving them with? It's like, you know, my mom was and finished the sentence. So I want them to say, my mom worked her butt off for nothing. Or do I want them to say, you know, my mom worked her butt off. She achieved X, Y, and Z. And, you know, she had to sacrifice this and that for me. You know, what do I want them to say about me when I'm gone? And, and that's such a huge question of what legacy I want to leave behind. But the impact and the imprint that we leave on our kids is probably the biggest ever legacy that we will leave behind of how we do that is the small things daily of just showing up for ourselves. So like and all ties and together, it's like, I know it's like I went off on a tangent. It's like, boom, like your mind's exploded. And if you're listening to this, you're like, well, that's like too serious or too deep. But it's true. When you think about when you are just long gone and what you left behind for your kids, it comes back into today, the present, what you're doing today. And the small things that are just showing up will compound and, you know, leave to what, you know, happens tomorrow. So it is just amazing just how much, how we take care of ourselves and how we look at ourselves as a person affects our kids down the road. Yeah, I mean, let's just sit with that for a moment. It's a lot. That was a lot. It's so powerful, but it's so important to start thinking about whatever that looks like for you doesn't have to be writing your eulogy although that is like an extremely powerful 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 practice but just knowing that like what is your why what is the the legacy what is what messages I mean even just thinking about what messages you want them to take from you and showing up living those messages it's so powerful and I mean I I could talk about this for hours and I'm really excited. We are actually doing a podcast swap where if you're listening to this the week that it comes out or after the week that this episode comes out, I'm actually a guest on your podcast, the Mommy Mindset Podcast. And so definitely check that out and it'll be kind of a follow-up conversation to this just to kind of address more of this conversation because obviously there's so much to it and it's such a powerful, mind-opening conversation. I really am just so excited that we are connected and get to get to like explore these topics. Before we wrap up the episode, I am huge on normalizing self-care, really big on just like helping moms see what it means to care for yourself and how we can do that. So I love asking guests, how do you take care of yourself? And do you have any tips for moms to make sure that they are also taking care of themselves regularly? Yes. So again, it's going to look different. How I'm taking care of myself is getting back into journaling. Be used to journal a lot and I actually stopped for quite a while. So I'm actually in a book club and I'm reading a book, which I've been wanting to do forever. So just reading a book that I want to read and journaling are just two small main things that I'm doing right now that I get to dedicate to myself and feed my mind and my soul and kind of give that time for myself. So that's what I'm doing right now. But I mean, it could just be as simple as like nourishing. I always focus on the three things, nourishing your body physically, your mind and your soul. So if you're doing one thing for each of those things, you are doing self-care. You are taking care of yourself, making sure you're focusing on your physical your mind and your soul. I love that and how simple that makes it. Like just make sure you're doing that. And the extent of course can be amplified, but like as long as you're doing it, then you're taking care of yourself. And in different seasons, it may be more or less that Mm -hmm. focusing on like making sure each of those pieces is being addressed is huge. Yes. Thank you so much for being here. I am like just, this is one of those conversations. (laughs) I'm gonna like just kind of sit with this. Can you let listeners know where to find you and just if there's anything they should keep an eye out for? Yes. So you can find me on Instagram at Annalise underscore gorgeous. And then my podcast is Mommy Mindset Podcast. You can listen to it on Apple, on Spotify. And I can share a free mommy mindset guide just to jumpstart your mindset as a mom. 
I have a free guide. It's really easy to go through and I can share that with, with anyone who's interested. Amazing. And we can link all of that in the show notes. Again, if you enjoyed this conversation and felt like there was lots of goodness in there that you want to keep exploring, we are going to be kind of doing a follow-up later this week on the Mommy Mindset Podcast, which I'm so excited about. So thank you for being here. You are worthy, Mama. 